I'm going to have the, the webinar recorded, so I'm just going to start that. Hello. Hello. Katie? Yes. It's Mary Jane. Hi, Mary Jane. Um, Is so anybody up? Yep, Go we ahead. have a few people on. Um, I'm just going to wait a few extra minutes, give everyone who um, is planning to join us just a, a little ex extra time. Okay, your voice is breaking up slightly, but um, I think for the most Oh, audio pin. I didn't access the audio pin. Should I call back and do that? Um, if you, um, uh, you sh are you using your uh, phone or your computer? My phone. Um, I think you might be fine, but you could always try. Okay, I'm going to call back in then, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, bye. So I'm thinking we'll start around 11.05. Okay. okay, I'm back, Katie. Welcome back. I'm still, okay, I think we're good. Um, so if, um, if we could just go through and introduce ourselves, just so we all have an idea of who is on the webinar today. Um, I'll start. I'm, my name is Katie Kenny. I'm project assistant at Connecticut Coalition to End Homelessness. Um, Kristen Granitech and I will be the folks who are um, administrating the uh, Be Homeful Fund, the diversion funds at CCH. And this is Mary Jane D. Filippo. I'm the finance director at CCEH. Uh, can you hear me? Marshall Operation Hope. <laughs> can you hear me? I don't know if this is working. Yep. Yep. Yes, oh, we can. Hi, I'm Sophia Carlson. I'm the Director of Housing Coordination and Retention at Inspirka. And I'm here with Doreen Hunter. She's the new Housing Coordinator at Inspirka. Wonderful. Noel Cameraman, Chief Officer of Program Effectiveness and Performance Measurement at Inspirica. Welcome.
Katie, this is Mary Hi, Jane. I'm not what sure if you can hear me. Tiandra uh -huh. Holly Becker from Supportive Housing Works. Great. Um, and if you, um, you guys can either, um, we will send around a recording of this webinar after it's over. Um, if you want to, you can either um, send me your email through the chat um, or you can email me directly. Um, I'll put in my email so you all have it. Um, so it should have just showed up in the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's 11.05, so I think we will start. Um, if anyone comes in a little bit late, um, we do have the recording, um, so we can send that to, to them. Um, so this is a webinar for the Fairfield County uh, Shelter Diversion through the CCHB Homeful Fund. Um, as I said, I am Katie Kenny. Um, I'll be going through this with you. Uh, so here's a, a, an outline of what we'll be going over today. Um, if you do have questions, there will be a few times throughout the webinar um, that I'll open up for those questions. You can either um, uh, write them in the chat box if you, can't, um, if you think you'll forget them. Um, you can write them down. Uh, we will have, we've budgeted about 45 minutes. Um, the webinar itself should take 30 minutes with extra time for questions. Um, but just to make sure we get through everything, um, I do want to save questions for those specific times. Um, so we'll go over the, the just general information about the program first. Um, uh, if you guys don't have the MOU in front of you, I can send that to you afterwards. Um, but we'll go in, We'll go through the content of the MOU. Um, I do have a, um, a sample version of a filled out financial assistance request form. So I'll show that with you guys. Um, and then we'll finish up with the audit process. Um, can I make sure, do you get, can you all hear me well? Yep. yep. Great, awesome. Um, if you're having trouble hearing me, uh, just uh, shout out in the chat box. So the Be Homeful Fund is part of the Be Homeful Project. Um, CCH established that in December 2014. It has a dual purpose of creating the Be Homeful Fund, a pool of statewide funds for shelter diversion accessible to shelters across the state. Um, and the project is also uh, a tool for raising awareness about family homelessness in Connecticut. Um, so, far, so far for the Be Homeful Fund, we've allocated $20,000 for, um, for shelter diversion in Fairfield County, specifically for families. Um, and the, so the fund, the um, the Be Homeful Fund is really set up to be as, uh, as simple and quick for you guys as possible. Um, so I'll go through what that means for you, um, but we really tried to streamline it so it's not a huge burden on you guys. So for the Fairfield County, um, the, the $20,000, this is accessible to emergency shelters in Fairfield County. Um, it can be used to divert families with children who are presenting at the shelter. Um, this is, I guess, sort of a no-brainer, but families should reach the shelter through the co your coordinated access network program, I mean process. Um, so it's, um, they go through the process of um, initial diversion, then reach the shelter for shelter diversion. So these are the families that uh, the Be Homeful Fund is really intended to, to help. So um, we're looking at families who are currently homeless, who are facing homelessness within two weeks, um, uh, imminent risk of eviction, and um, that's more specified towards uh, 
for example, families who um, have a court-ordered stipulation agreement, um, they're at risk of defaulting on the terms. Um, it's really sort of end of the line. Um, for eviction, we want to help those families. Um, and then last but not least, families who are living in um, subsidized units, they are passed through on the rent and they have been issued a notice to quit by the Fairfield County Housing Authority. So the signing agencies are you guys, whoever signs the um, subcontract agreement or the MOU. Um, these are the responsibilities that um, you will be expected to take care of. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, first responsibility, determine if families are eligible for diversion. Um, if they are, um, please maintain documentation for families. Um, and I do have a list for those. They're also outlined on the MOU, um, so I don't have a specific slide for those. Um, you will be expected to determine interventions, um, what's most effective for families, basically. Uh, maintaining documentation of assistance requests, and I will go over those. I do have a, um, uh, that outlined a little later, um, so we'll go over that in a bit. Um, preparing and submitting payment requests, that's literally sending the request to us. Um, and then participating in a peer audit, those happen once a year. Um, and as I said, we'll go over those at the end of the webinar. Um, so just a, a brief, just to briefly go over it, the documentation for the families. Um, that's sort of the documents that you're probably already collecting for anyone who's um, coming to into the shelter. Um, so the, the CAN intake referral um, should be processed as shelter diversion in HMIS. Um, you'll need identifi identification documents, housing status documents, income documents, the intake form, release of information, stabilization plan for housing retention, um, just so we know that the diversion is, uh, is effective um, and not just uh, a Band-Aid, for instance. Um, and if the family is going to be moved into a new unit um, or a new housing, uh, you will need a housing inspection form. Um, and again, those are all outlined on the MOU for you. So these are the costs that you can request from us. Um, this is not the full list. The, the rest of the list is on the next slide. Um, so you can do, of course, security deposit, rental subsidy. The rental subsidy can be um, full or it can be partial. It can be up to three months. Um, you can have utility deposit, startup costs, or rearage rental application fees, sometimes for moving into a new apartment, there's a fee um, just to uh, uh, apply. Um, moving expenses, if uh, a family needs help to um, store something or uh, move, say, their furniture from one unit to the next. Car repairs, um, gas cards, if the uh, mode of transportation to employment is uh, their own car. Uh, motel stay, um, that's a little specific. So for the motel stay, it really has to be if there's no other option. Um, and only if it's part of a stabilize, stabilization plan um, for to get the family into housing. Um, so it can't be just um, uh, like an alternative to shelter if there's not a plan to um, uh, then move the family into housing. Um, bus passes, again, if the family uses bus, buses to get to um, employment, we can um, cover bus pass, pass due medical bills, child care payments, and other costs as approved by Kristen. Um, so I will send out Kristen's email. Um, it's also on the uh, CCH website. Um, if you have a family who needs a type of diversion that is not, um, doesn't fit into one of these categories, um, please contact Kristen before sending a, uh, an, a, um, a financial assistance request form. Uh, we want to make sure that we approve it before you go through the whole process of um, sending that over or 
uh, gathering any documentation or anything like that. Um, so there is a cap. So you can uh, mix and match whatever makes sense for your family, uh, but the total assistance for any one family cannot exceed $2,500. Uh, so for instance, you could have a, a rental payment and security deposit. That's fine, um, as long as it's no more than $2,500. How do you request financial assistance? This is probably the easiest part. All you need to send us is a filled out financial assistance request form and a W-9 if applicable. And I'll go over when that's, uh, when that's necessary in a bit. Um, so we don't need uh, an invoice. We don't need a bill. We don't need um, a lease. Um, all that documentation, you don't need to fax that to us. We really only need the request form, and if necessary, a W-9. So the W-9, um, it's, it's pretty simple. If you are requesting um, over $600 for any one vendor, so for instance, that's one medical group or one um, uh, landlord, um, then we do need a W-9. And this is true for if you're if the, you're requesting for two different families. Uh, let's say family A needs three hundred dollars from Joe Schmo car rental or not car rental uh, car repair, and uh, family B needs five hundred dollars from Joe Schmo car repair. Um, neither of those are above six hundred dollars. But because combined, they do reach over that uh, threshold amount, um, we do need a W-9. And we'll be keeping track of that, too. Um, so if you, uh, let's say, two different agencies request funds from um, or assistance for the same vendor, um, that's fine. We'll let you know uh, if it gets to a point that we need a W-9. Um, just as a general rule, though, we do ask for rental payments, security deposits, child care, and past due medical bills. They send it over a W-9 anyways. Um, when is a W not necessary? So as I said, if it's under $600 um, or $600 unless we don't need it. Um, the big exception is if the vendor is a corporation. So if Joe Schmo car repair is actually Joe Schmo Car Repair, Inc., then you don't need to send us a W-9, even, um, even if it's over that $600 threshold. Um, so these are the, the documents associated with um, the, the specific financial assistance that you'll be sending us. So these are the documents you don't need to fax over to us, but you should have on file. Uh, so a copy of the lease, utility bill, um, invoice, whatever is um, appropriate for the type of expense you're requesting. Oh, um, so Mary Jane has a good point on the W-9. Um, if it is $600, we do need a W-9. So if it's less than $600, we don't. Um, so for the, the um, documents for financial assistance, uh, if it's a past due medical bill, um, uh, uh, having the bill on file is what you would want to keep. And if you're not sure what kind of documents you need, um, feel free to reach out to us. You can call Kristen or I. Um, we should be able to answer that question for you. Um, proof of ownership of property if this is for um, like a rental payment or security deposit. Um, if the family is doubled up but they don't own the property, um, I don't think we can pay security deposit or rental payment in that case. But if it's their own property, um, we can cover that. 
in the case of eviction, um, having a letter of agreement for continued residence, um, just so we know that the diversion ex is ex uh, successful. Um, so the type of diversion to keep them from being evicted um, basically does what's it, what it's intended to. And then if the family is moving into a new apartment um, or a new unit, um, having a property inspection form, uh, you will have to keep that on file. Um, and also, the request that you send us, keep a copy of that, the W-9 if you sent it, and then a copy of the assistance request form. Uh, just keep that in the file with the family, um, with the other documents. So I do have a, a sample version of the financial assistance request form. Um, so this is one I filled out for myself as if I were the client. Um, and I just wanted to fill it out so you have an idea of what it looks like when, it's, um, uh, when everything is all filled out as it needs to be, um, instead of just showing you a blank document. So of course here we have the client name. I put in my own name. Um, you would not put in your name, you would put the name of the, the head of household. Um, HMIS ID, I just made one up, um, but that would be the, the head of household too. Um, and very basic family information, just the number of adults in that family, and the number of children, and of course children is under 18 years old. So for the financial assistance request form, uh, we do need one for each separate vendor. Um, if you are sending us a rental and a security deposit, uh, I don't think you need to send separate forms for that, as long as both checks would be going to the same exact person. If you are asking for a uh, gas card and a bus pass, uh, since the bus pass would be the bus company and the gas card would most likely be stop and shop, uh, you would have to send two separate forms, one for the bus and one for the, the gas card. So make payable, make check payable to, um, pretty simple, that's just the vendor, um, whoever we're writing the check out to, pay address, that's their physical address, uh, so if they have a, um, an office and a PO box, um, that would be the office address, send to would be the PO box. Um, send to is also useful for bus pass and gas cards. So if you're requesting bus pass or gas card, the send to address would be your address. We actually send the check to you, and then you help the family turn that check into a bus pass or gas card. Um, pay phone number and email, of course, that is the email and phone number of the, um, of the vendor. Um, and then just listed below is the type of request. Uh, you'll check off whatever you're um, asking for specific to this request. So again, if you're requesting two separate things, um, if you're requesting bus pass and gas card, you on one you would check off the gas card and one on the bus pass. Um, you wouldn't check off both unless one form can cover two different expenses. And the W-9, of course, if it's applicable. And if you're ever not sure about um, whether you need to send a W-9 or not, uh, you can always just ask us. That's fine. We do have a, a little certification checkbox at the end. Um, this is your just agreeing that you have all of the documents, um, that you're going to keep it on file. Uh, we will have an audit process, and I'll go over that more in depth later. Um, but if uh, what you're agreeing basically says, I have the documentation. If there's anything missing, I will get it within 30 days. If I don't get it within 30 days, I will re um, uh, repay this specific request back to CCH. Um, and then at the end, just make sure that you fill out all this information. This is about you. Um, this is the agency information, that's your agency, uh, your name and title, uh, and your contact information, please make sure to sign it. Um, we won't be able to accept it unless it is signed and dated. Uh, 
Um, so does any of anyone have any questions? I want to pause um, and see if anyone's confused about something or they want clarification. Okay, it sounds like everyone's good. Again, if you have a question, um, you can type it in. Um, uh, or um, we'll stop again uh, a few slides later. Um, so if you do have a question um, at this point, uh, That's a good point. So um, Noel says uh, we may want to change the page vendor. Um, we can we can definitely do that. Um, so I just want to finish with the audit. Um, so this is a peer audit process. Uh, it's a little unusual um, from uh, just, so CCH isn't going to just um, come to your agency um, look at your files and leave. Um, we're actually having a, um, a, a peer audit. It's based off of something that the New London has been doing for diversion, um, and it's been pretty effective. So we're asking that we're going to have CCH staff, and we ask that everyone who has signed the MOU um, send a representative to one uh, central location in Fairfield County. Um, you will bring your your the the files of the clients that have been assisted through the Be Homeful Fund. Um, and we'll all sit around a table. Basically, for each agency, um, we'll have a list of HMIS IDs. We'll pick three to five at random. Um, for um, And we'll go in order. So the first agency will pull out those records, um, CCH staff and um, the other agencies will look for any missing or incomplete documentation in those files. Um, and if there is, we'll point those out, say you have 30 days. Um, if there's not, you're good. We move on to the next agency. So we're all really looking at um, uh, the files together, um, going over um, uh, completeness as a group. Um, and just to finish up, and then I will take that question that I just see in the chat. Um, so as a result of the uh, audit process, if there's anything missing, as I said, you do have 30 days to submit it to us. Um, and if it's not in by 30 days, we do ask, or you will be required to refund that financial assistance. Um, and this is our uh, contact information if you need it. Uh, so we do have a question. If people are in shelter, are they still eligible for this diversion fund? The answer to that is no. So for the diversion fund, it's really to keep families uh, from entering shelter in the first place. Um, if you can find a way to assist families who are already in shelter, um, that's really more on the rapid exit, rapid rehousing scope. Um, this is to keep families from entering the shelter at all. Um, so it's finding whatever assistance you can um, to divert them away. Um, uh, and if you have any question of, you know, um, well, here's a family. They uh, are literally homeless tomorrow. Um, I don't know if I can divert them by tomorrow. You can call us up. Um, we'll, we'll go over it with you. Um, and I think, so that's the end of the webinar. Does anyone else have any other questions? Ah, um, is there a target number of families that we are trying to serve with this fund? Uh, we don't have a target number. Um, we just have the, um, our limit is $20,000. Um, so uh, however you think, um, is most appropriate for that. So we're not saying you have to um, divert, uh, you know, X number of families. Um, it's really um, however many 
you need to divert um, as you think appropriate. Uh, what is the required documentation? Well, let me just pull it up. What is the required documentation showing people who are doubled up are at risk of losing their housing? Um, that's a really good question. I'm not sure I have the answer to that one. Um, it might be um, specific to some families. Some might have uh, specific documentation. Others probably don't. Um, I will actually check back with Lisa and Kristen on that one, um, and I'll include the answer to that question in our follow-up. Uh, that's a really good question. Um, so I will get the answer to that to you. Uh, can we have a copy of the PowerPoint? Absolutely. Um, I will send that. I will send a, a recording of this webinar, um, and I can also send a copy of the PowerPoint. Uh, can we do a notarized letter from the lease holder? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, Michaela, can you expand on that question a bit? Oh, if someone, uh, yeah, um, uh, probably. Um, is that in the case of uh, a notarized letter saying, from the landlord saying this person um, will have to leave? Is that more like a like an eviction of yeah. a doubled up? In the past, we've had um, we've had problems trying to figure out if someone's doubled up. Um, you know, if they've been doubled up for three months, are they really at risk of? being evicted um, mm -hmm. or losing their, being at imminent risk, um, mm -hmm. how do we prove that they're actually at imminent risk? Um, if we tell the leaseholder, um, I'm, the leaseholder says, I'm going to lose my housing if this person continues to stay with me, or, you know, I've given this person a final deadline or something, um, you know, we've been able to kind of get notarized letters in the past. Um, but would that be sufficient documentation? So maybe when you um, when you ask about the doubled up situation, um, we can you know uh, see if that might be an option. Um, yeah, you know that's actually I hadn't heard of that before, but that sounds like a really good solution. Um, I'll I don't really know that, else how to tell. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> difficult situation, right? Um, gray area. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of diversion, I think, is has a tendency to be sort of a gray area. Um, mm -hmm. So I will clarify that um, and get you an answer. Awesome. Thanks. Um, so any last minute questions? Great. Well, again, um, my information is here. You can reach out to me if you have any follow-up questions. Um, uh, you can also reach out to Lisa, Pam, or Kristen. Um, please do send me your contact information, um, either through the chat or um, after I close the meeting. Uh, please email me. Um, I do want to send this out to you. Uh, we have some extra follow-up information just about the Be Homeful project um, and some of the things we're looking at for Fairfield County. Um, so I do want to make sure you get that information. Um, but uh, since this is the end, thank you all for joining us. Um, I really appreciate you coming. Um, I hope this was helpful for you. Um, if you're Again, if you're confused, just let me know. Um, and we will be in touch. Have a wonderful day. You too. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you.